Christians can be demonized. Most Christians accept that non-Christians could be possessed by demons. But if by possessed, we meant ownership, technically anyone unsaved already belongs to Satan. They're already under his influence, whether it's obvious to them or not. But many reject the idea of a born-again Christian being capable of possession. This word isn't as common. Most people prefer the term demonization. It's not about ownership, but influence. Demons don't possess, own your house, but your house could still possess, have in it, demons. They're squatters, unwanted guests, like an ant infestation. Don't be so prideful that you miss out on freedom by getting offended. You're saying, I have a demon? How dare you? I have the Holy Spirit. Relax. I'm not questioning your salvation at all. This is a matter of sanctification, not justification. Is there any evidence at all? Demons may still have access to your life. Are you 100% like Jesus in every way? So, is deliverance only for unbelievers? Once, a Canaanite, non-Jewish woman, asked Jesus to deliver her daughter. Matthew 15, verses 22 through 26 says, quote, Lord, my daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. End quote. Jesus called deliverance the children's bread. To Jesus, deliverance is a blessing God offers to his children not those still in sinful rebellion. So, how could a demon cohabit a born-again Christian with the Holy Spirit also in them? Humans are body, soul, and spirit. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23 says, quote, May God sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. End quote. Your spirit is born of God and is secure. It's your life essence and where the Holy Spirit is. But your soul, and to some extent your body, is still accessible to demons. Your soul is you. Your mind, will, emotions, desires, values, personality, Memories? Ever have a sinful thought, false belief, broken emotion, sinful desire, bad memory, despite being born again? Of course, because all these things are in the flesh, not the spirit. The soul, where we shouldn't, but are still capable of, having things contrary to our new nature. This is also where demons could be exerting influence. A person drinking wouldn't be possessed, owned, by the alcohol, but they'd still be under its influence. Could a born-again person get drunk? Yes. Their spirit wouldn't be influenced, but their soul and body would. One drink may have minimal effects. Five would majorly alter them and 10 could cause death or total loss of control. Similarly, we can have varying degrees of demonic influence. Picture a spectrum from temptation on one end, then influence, to harassment, to oppression, to possession with ongoing moments of loss of control. But the different words are semantics. The bottom line is this. If there's any influence at all, 
then there's some level of demonization. Don't settle. It all needs to be cut off.